Okay, so let, let's start with uh, some work. Not sure if this, okay. So for homework two, are there any questions? Can you go with 5B? 5B, the last one. Okay. Yeah. So evaluate the, this integral. Um, So can, can you describe your approach for, for this problem? Or do you have any, any ideas for this one? I was kind of stuck on this one. My first thought was to do a U sub, but that doesn't really work out for it. Okay. So uh, I think for this one, since we have a delta function, so um, we can, you know, we can treat this one as a general signal fx, right? And for uh, and then for this type of product uh, in the lecture slides, we have shown that um, any function, any signal fx times the uh, shifted version, time shifted version of the delta function. Uh, equals to the constant multiplied by the by the shifted impulse signal, <clears throat> and this constant is based, is exactly the sh time shift of the impulse. So with this property, uh, we can replace this F entire f x by a constant value f three. So you just need to evaluate. this one. And in this case, this is just a constant number that you can calculate uh, based on this part. And, and in the end, you just need to evaluate this, the integration over this shifted impulse signal. Is this clear? Yes, it is. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so always remember when you see some, some signal multiplied by the delta signal. You can always use this property to simplify the, this product. Okay. So let's continue with the lecture. I guess last time we have lecture three. I had a quick question. Oh yeah. Um, we kind of briefly went through convolution, I think, in the last lecture. Are we going to get a little bit more into that, or is that kind of it for that one? Yeah, we will talk talk about that in detail in the lecture four. Okay. Yeah, so that is just an example on convolution. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Okay, now in the lecture three, we start with uh, that... Uh, we know the system is basically described as the relation between input and output signals. And we can categorize the system um, based on their, uh, many of their properties, memory, invertibility, causality, stability. And more, most important, the most importantly, the last two are the, uh, two of the most important properties of systems that we will discuss in this course is time invariance and linearity. So last time we introduced time invariance. So let's review that part. So we say that a system is time invariant if 
think about we feed an XT signal to the system capital F and we get a corresponding YT signal. Now the, the, the system is called time invariant. If the output, uh, if we, if the signal that we feed into the system is shifted by a constant time tau, and then the corresponding output of the system will also be shifted by tau. If this property holds, then we say the system is invariant to the time shift. So uh, however you shift the input signal, the output will correspondingly be shifted in the same way. And we can just follow the, these three standard steps to verify the time invariance of the system. And I think in the homework, you will need to strictly follow these steps. And last time we went over these two examples and sometimes uh, it's a little bit tricky when you follow these steps, make sure you uh, do the time scaling and time shifting in the proper way. And uh, so next we will talk about linearity of system. Now we, we will say a system is, lean, is a linear system if the following property holds. Now basically, if we have, uh, let's say if we have two pairs of input and output relationships, if we feed X1 to system and we get correspondingly Y1, and if we, get, if we feed X2, any X, X2 to the system and we get Y2, now here, X1, X2 can be arbitrary inputs. So that doesn't have to be a, any specific signal. So for any two inputs, X1, X2, we have their corresponding output from the system, Y1 and Y2. Uh, if this is given, then the system is linear. If now instead, we, we now feed a linear combination of these two input signals to the system. So it's, a times X1 plus B times X2. This A and B can be any uh, complex numbers. So this is a linear combination of the two, uh, of any arbitrary two input signals. Now, if we feed this linear combination of the, these two inputs and uh, the output that we obtain from the, from the system is also the same linear combination of the corresponding outputs, output signal of these two individual signals. If this property holds, we, we call the system is a linear system. Because once you, if, what it says is that if you feed a com linear combination of the inputs into the system, the, out, the corresponding outputs is a corresponding linear combination of the individual outputs. So this means when we when we analyze this type of linear systems, we can instead instead of looking at the entire input, we can look at each input and figure out their corresponding output first, and then do this uh, do the same linear combination to obtain the exact output. And because this is a arbitrary linear combination, so this means that this also uh, this linearity property also implies that the system is uh, equivalent to uh, the scaling. So basically, you can if you only if you if the input is only a times x one, okay. So set b equal to zero. If the input is a times x one, then the corresponding output is a times y one. So basically the output will be scaled with the same factor A. Or if you set A and B, both of them equal to one, then this will says that if, it, if the input is X is, is the summation of these two signals, then the output will be the summation of the corresponding uh, output signals of these two input signals.
Okay, and follow this definition, uh, we can check the linearity of a system by for again by following uh, the, these three standard steps. Now the first step is to consider any uh, any x1 and x2 and figure out their y1 corresponding y1 and y2 as uh, following the system equation. Usually the system equation will be given. So consider arbitrary x1 and x2, and then we have their corresponding y1 and y2. This is step one. You consider any arbitrary uh, two input and output uh, pairs of the system. And in step two, we create as input signal x tilde. That is a linear combination of these two input signals. And here the linear combination can be arbitrary. So these A and B are arbitrary uh, numbers. And then we feed this uh, combined signal to the system. So we feed X tilde to the system. And then following the system equation, we get the corresponding Y tilde T, the output. Now to verify the linearity of the system, we just need, need to uh, compare this output y to the t and the linear combination of the corresponding uh, outputs of the of these two input signals if these two are equivalent then the system uh, is a linear system right because y tilde is the output of uh, that corresponds to these linearly combined inputs input signals and by definition, if this if this y tilde is 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 the same linear combination of these two output signals, then we say the system is a linear system. Okay, so it's the these steps the logic is very similar to the to the previous uh, time invariant part. You just create uh, this special input signal, and then. Uh, obtain the corresponding output, and lastly, you compare if this output is the desired uh, type of output that we we need to verify in this definition. Okay, and I think we can just quickly do do one example here. So let's verify. Uh, yeah, this I spend two minutes on this. For this system, just verify if this is a linear system or nonlinear system, following the three steps on these slides. So yt is t times the input signal xt.
OK. So if you think, uh, if you think this is a time, sorry, if you think this is a linear system, uh, please hands up. You think, OK, two of you. Uh, how about, yeah, for, for the students over Zoom, you can also hands up using the Zoom function. I saw two of you hands up. So the other five. Uh, okay, so it seems that ma the majority of you think uh, that this is not a linear system. But so let's let's go over this uh, follow these standard steps and check check it out. Okay, so we follow these three stand uh, three standard steps step by step. Well, step one, we create you know, x one. Uh, and x2 and consider their corresponding outputs. Now by the system equation, we have x y1 is p times x1 p. y2 uh, is p times x2 t. Right, this is what this, what this system does. So now we have these two pairs of input and output. And in the second step, we consider um, we generate this x tilde, which is a linear combination. Uh, of these two input signals. Now, okay. <clears throat> For this x tilde, if this is the input, then following the system equation, right? We, we know that the output is basically t times the input. So let's write it down. It's just t times the input. And the input is a linear combination of these two. So we can plug in this linear combination. So we get t times a times x1 t plus b times x2 t. OK. And we can do expansions a t x1 t plus b t x2 t. Now we need to compare, now we have this y tilde t. So we uh, we need to further obtain a times y1 plus b times y2, and then compare these two. So let's, let's look at a times y1 t plus b times y2 t first. And these two, are already obtained here in the first step. So we just plug them into this linear combination. We have a t x one t plus b t x two t. Right, just plug in this, and in the end you can find you can see that they are they are equivalent. So this is a uh, this is indeed a linear system, a linear system. Yeah. It might seem a little bit counterintuitive because the, if you look at system equation, um, the input is scaled by uh, T. And this scaling factor T is a time varying factor. So if t, as t changes, this scaling factor also changes. But in the end, um, we we verify that this is indeed a linear system because this scaling factor is only uh, related to t and not on x. So it is it is still a linear uh, relation between the input and output. Got a comment from Zoom. Uh, is this the same as being closed under scalar multiplication? Um, it, so can you can you explain what does the closed mean for linear algebra? I think here we yeah I think this is uh, this is kind of more general because we here we are considering any arbitrary linear combination of the two inputs. So with, with this, you can 
you can you can prove you can generalize to a linear combination of multiple inputs or a simple scaling closed under addition uh, let me see um So can you can you elaborate on this point more specifically? Like like like, what is the specific uh, meaning of being closed under multiplication? They are subspace of R. Okay, so if you are saying that if um, right, if you do a linear combination of two vectors, they are still in this space, then the I think it's kind yeah I think the idea is kind of. Uh, Linear independence. I think the 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 idea is kind of different here. So, uh, in the linear algebra, I think what what you are referring to uh, is that uh, if we have two vectors um, belongs to a space, and then consider their arbitrary linear combination, if if their arbitrary linear combination is still in this space, uh, then the space is defined as, a, for example, affine space or a closed space, closed affine space. Uh, but here, let me see. Here, what we are saying is that okay, we have we have two arbitrary input and output relations, and if they're Corresponding linear combinations will give the corresponding linear combination of outputs. Yes, I think I think then by following this definition, you can say that this system is closed under uh, under this linear combination operations. Yeah, I, I think so. Right, uh, I think the, the idea looks similar, but the, the exact definition is actually different. Right, because here we have a mapping that instead of just a linear combination. Okay, so any other questions? So you can see that uh, you have to follow the standard steps in order, in order to tell the linearity. Sometimes it may feel a little bit counterintuitive. Uh, now, another quick question, is this a time invariant system or, or not? How about the time invariance? Right, this is the standard steps for time invariance. But we can just do a quick, uh, quick check. So we have this, for time invariance, now we have this uh, xt and yt here. Now we generate an x tilde t, which is a shifted version of the xt. Okay. Now let's feed this x tilde t. So we have this x tilde t. We have this sigma. Now, according to the okay, let me write the system here. Okay, according to the system equation, if we feed x tilde t to the system, what is the y tilde t? What is the y tilde t here? There's a time shift in the x tilde part. So should we also shift the, the t part? Yeah, right. So to make everything clear, okay, I suggest you follow the system equation first. Make sure you are confident. And then you plug in the x tilde t's. So that gives you this one, okay. And we need to, now this is y tilde t, and we need to further consider y t minus tau. But y t is t times x t, 
by the system equation. So y t minus tau is, I'm gonna replace t by t minus tau everywhere. So, and you can see the difference. The first factor t is gonna be replaced by t minus tau and x t being replaced by x t minus tau. So you can see this is not identical. So this is not time invariant. Okay, so follow the standard steps. Okay. So this is the example that we just uh, went through. And the other example is sign uh, this sign system. So we can just quickly look at this, the steps here. I think in the in the previous section we showed that this system is a time invariant system. Uh, so here let's look at the linearity. We have this uh, two pairs. Step one, we have two, we generate two pairs of input and output signals. Y one is sign x one, y two sine x two. Step two, we create a linear combination of these two input uh, x1, x2. So we define x tilde as the linear combination. And then we obtain, we need to obtain the corresponding y tilde. So by the system equation, y tilde is sine x tilde, right? Because now the input is, sine, is x tilde. So y tilde is sine x tilde, but x tilde t is this linear combination. So we plug it in here. So we obtain that y tilde t is sine ax1 plus bx2. So this is the y tilde part. And the, in the last step, we need to calculate the linear combination of the corresponding outputs and then compare with the y tilde that we obtain from step two. So uh, we know from the first step that y1 is sine x1, y2 is sine x2. So a, a times y1 plus b times y2 is a times sine x1 plus b times sine x2. And we can see that they are not, they are not identical. So this is not a linear system because sine is in general not a linear function. Okay, we have sine ax1 plus bx2. In general, this is not equal to a times sine x1 plus b times sine x2. Okay. Uh, we have one more exercise. And th these two are about discrete time systems, but the idea is exactly the same, okay? Uh, for, to verify the time invariance and linearity. Because in the definition, it has nothing to do with uh, whether it is continuous time or discrete time. So the first example is exactly the same as, uh, as this example, except that we are replacing T by a discrete time N. So, in this sense, this system should be the same, uh, be, be of the same type as that continuous time system. So it is linear, not time invariant. We just verify this uh, for the continuous time version. So let's look at the, the, the second one. This is more interesting. Um, this YN is defined as the maximum looking at the maximum of the following three values is the maximum amount the current input xn, the previous input xn minus one, and the one step before xn minus two, looking at the maximum uh, of the adjacent inputs. Again, this is a system, but you can, this defines a system. Now uh, let's show that this system is the linearity and time invariance. Look at the linearity. Maybe we can, okay. So first of all, it says that the system is time invariant. So you can, you can, uh, I give you two minutes and work on this one. Uh, follow the 
standard steps and you write it down here and check the invariance of the system. I got a question. Yeah. So we check time invariance um, and then check linearity. But if you if you check it separately, then that works to find out if it's linear and time invariant or vice versa. Yeah, you need to verify these two properties separately following okay. the yeah, following the two approaches. So let's look at the time invariance uh, of this system first. And this is the <coughs> standard steps. And I give you uh, two minutes.
Okay. So did any of you get a different answer? It's supposed to be time invariant. Did you get this one, time invariance? Okay. Yeah, we can follow the standard steps. Okay, it's not that, this, the system looks a little bit uh, complicated. But just find out the definition and follow these steps. Um, we get, we can create, first step we are to create this shifted version. Of the input and in the second step we obtain the corresponding uh, output of this shifted input and we always follow the system equation first right first this is the system equation the output is the input maximum among these three inputs and now the x tilde is, we can replace x tilde by the specific meaning. So x tilde n is, okay, now here's the thing. From step one, we know x tilde n is x n minus tau. So this x tilde n is x n minus tau. This is clear. Now looking at the second one, it's x tilde n minus one. So this is a shifted version of the, is input x tilde. So we, in order to obtain that, we're gonna replace n by n minus one uh, in the definition. So this gives us, so x tilde n minus one, so replacing n by n minus one, we get this. And similarly for the third one we have, so this is y tilde. Now, step three, we look at y t minus tau, y n minus tau. So y n is here, y n is here. Therefore, I can just replace uh, n by n minus tau. So that gives me x n minus tau, uh, X, um, okay, so replace n by n minus tau. And here replace n by n minus tau. And then you can verify that y tilde n is equal to y n minus tau. So this means that by, by, by comparing these two uh, expressions, they are equivalent. Everything is equivalent here. So this verifies that this system is a time invariant system. Okay. You don't have to worry about uh, the value of this maximum as long as everything is equivalent. So their maximum will also be equivalent. So this is the... <clears throat> Time invariance. So let, let's let's go over the linearity part uh, together, the L part. Okay, so in the to verify the linearity, I'm looking at two pairs of input and output first. So y1n is maximum x1 x1, one minus one, x1, one minus two. And similarly for All right, so just look at you create uh, <coughs> two pairs of input and outputs. And then you consider an arbitrary linear combination of these two. 
uh, inputs. So following the system equation, we can get the corresponding output. Uh, the system equation says this is y tilde n of x tilde n x tilde n minus one x tilde n minus two. And these three can be, uh, we have followed the definition of X2 that we can identify. Then is, well, this is A, okay, I'm going to write it vertically. This is the first one. The second one is X2 the N minus one. So we are going to replace n by n minus one. So it's ax one, this x n, uh, n minus one plus e x two. And the, the last one is the same thing. We are just re replacing this by n minus two. That's that's the y tilde n. This is the second step. The last step, we look at the corresponding, uh, the linear combination of the corresponding uh, individual outputs. So it's y a times y1 plus b times y2. And y1 and y2 are here. So we just plug, plug them in. So it's a times max x1 and x1 and minus 1 x1 and minus 2 right this is the y1 here and y2 is here so it's plus b B times this one. Now we just need to compare uh, the y tilde n that we obtained in step two. And the linear combination of the corresponding outputs. So looking at these two expression, uh, are they equivalent or not? Uh, the, the first one has a single maximum. Uh, so, so the linear combination is inside and then we take the maximum of the three items. But this one, we take the maximum of the corresponding three uh, items first and then take the linear combination. So the question is, are they equivalent? Not equivalent, right? Uh, well, I guess you can you can give a counter example. Um, I don't have one here, but yeah. I could say if you have one of them is ten, and the other is two of them, so we made it ten. Let's say everything else came out to the table sum of for y and the other um, was less than nine, then that would come out as a ten. But if there's a smaller one. The negative one may not maybe negative one probably will be right. Yeah. Um yes, exactly. I think so in your example, uh AX one is ten plus BX two is negative one. And um right, so Well, here you can you can multiply, multiply inside. So this is ten and the negative one. Yeah. So the idea is that we can choose these numbers, uh, choose them to be very to take very small value, so that in the first maximum, uh, this this one becomes the maximum number. 
But here, for example, if I set x2 and minus 1 to be 0, uh, then apparently in the second part, 0 is greater than negative 1. So in this maximum, I'm going to take I'm going to take this one. So in this way, uh, in the first equation, we are looking at this, the first line. We are, we are adding the B times X to N, but in the second equation here, because of this, it was bigger. So we can just, so this is actually uh, plus B times X to N minus one. So in general, the, so, so in general, you can say that max, the maximum operation is not, um, it's not a linear function in general. So this, uh, so this, this shows that the system is not uh, linear, not linear. One comment. Okay, the question is: Would B have to be inside the second function in case B was never negative? So here, right? I think B uh, here by the definition of linearity, B has to be outside the maximum. But I think uh, you, uh, your idea is actually very, uh, also very useful here. Another way to create a counter example is to consider when if B is negative, uh, if this coefficient is negative, then probably, then the maximum here would be, you know, if you put, put B inside, that will give you a minimum of the negative numbers. Yeah, so, so in that way, it might be easier to construct uh, more counter examples. But uh, here, B is, uh, should be outside. Okay, so this is the Linearity and time invariant, linear and time invariant systems. So once we have these two concepts, we can combine them and talk about LTI system. So LTI stands for linear and time invariant. Okay. So very straightforwardly, the LTI system is basically it's both linear and time invariant. So this is the uh, most important type of system that we will, dis we will discuss in this course. Uh, because they are, first of all, they are relatively simple to understand and analyze. And more importantly, many uh, practical applications, we will see a lot of uh, examples later, their system equation actually corresponds to a LTS system. So this system can be understood uh, in a comprehensive, comprehensive and complete way uh, by leveraging all the mathematical concepts that we have introduced so far. So in fact, uh, for example, uh, we will see later in many uh, practical examples. Most most of them are circuit examples. Many signals and signal processing systems can be described by a linear constant coefficient, ordinary differential equation. Now, looking at this equation, it's very it's very simple. The left hand side is the output signal y t as a linear combination of yt and all its higher order derivatives. And on the right hand side is the linear combination of all the higher order derivatives of the inputs. So we call this a linear constant coefficient ODE, ordinary differential equation. 
So this equation uh, characterizes uh, a relation between input and output and their derivatives. So given these initial conditions, uh, later we will, we will uh, develop some Fourier transform and other transform techniques to solve these equations. But in general, um, this, equation, this, this kind of systems is a very important uh, type of linear and time invariant systems. So you can follow the definition and check that these type of systems are uh, uh, LTS systems. And in particular, we call the, the highest order N as the order of the system. And these are the coefficients A1, A, A0 to AN and B, they are the coefficients of the system. Okay, and to solve this type of equations, we need to, to have some, some kind of initial conditions on the uh, derivatives. Okay, so uh, so LTI systems are particularly important for this system because we can show that this LCC ODE system, uh, they are LTI systems when the initial conditions are all zero. And this type of uh, alternate differential equation systems can be used to describe many practical systems. So I think we, sh yeah, we have one example here. Let's look at this one. The second order circuit example, um, like we have voltage. This is a resistor, uh, capacitor, and the inductor. Now by the voltage and car current law, we have the following equation. Now let's look at the, this equation. This equation says that the voltage of the power power source, this XT, the voltage signal of the power source, this voltage must be equivalent to the sum of all the voltages of all of these three elements. So the voltage of the resistor is the re resistance times the YT. Now here YT is the current. Okay, it's the current times the resistance that gives you the voltage around this. Uh, resistor. And for the inductor, the, the voltage around it is described in this way. It's the inductance L times the derivative of the current. And for the capacitor, it's described in this integration way. It's the 1 over capaci uh, capacity times the integration of the current up to the current time t. Now this is the fundamental equation of this system. It basically says the voltage of the power source equals to all the other, uh, the sum of all the other voltages. And this equation is not easy to solve because we have a derivative, we have signal, the current itself, and we have the integration of the current. And on the right hand side, we have uh, the voltage signal. So it, this it involves uh, derivative, involves integration, involves the signal themselves. Not uh, not easy to solve in general. So we can a uh, very simple way is to take derivatives on both sides with regard to t. So the first item, the so first first term, by taking one more derivative, we have a second order derivative here. And this one <coughs> becomes a first order <coughs> derivative. And since we are taking derivative, so the integration uh, goes away, it becomes yt. It's the derivative of this integration <coughs> with regard to t is just yt. Okay, and then this xt becomes a derivative. And you can see that by taking the derivative, this becomes a this falls into a standard uh, LCC ODE system, right? A very standard LCC ODE system. <clears throat> it's 
on both sides of the equations, all we have is the all types, uh, all kinds of derivatives of the input and outputs. Well, so on the left hand side, we have zeros order derivative. This is the signal itself. Zeros order derivative, first order derivative, second order derivative, and they are linearly combined. And on the right hand side, we only have the first order derivative of the voltage signal. So in general, this is a very standard uh, ODE system. And the other type of LTI systems uh, can be found in discrete time systems. <clears throat> Especially when the system equations are described by difference equations, right? So in the continuous time, we talk about the differential equations. In the discrete time, the differential becomes difference. So, uh, for, so for discrete time systems, we can consider this such a class of difference equations, and they can be shown to be LTS systems. And you can see the idea is very similar. On the left hand side, we have all types of uh, difference of the yn signal. It's yn, yn minus one, and uh, and so on. And on the left hand, on the, on the right hand side, is all the uh, delayed versions of the in, input signals xn. So we call this this type of equation a difference equation. Now, uh, what type of systems can be described in this way? For example, uh, such a feedback system is usually a is usually a, corresponds to a difference equation. Now we can look at this system diagram. We have input x n, uh, and there's a feedback. From the output side. So the output is feedback to the input. So the output is first scaled by A, and then here is a minus sign. Okay, here's a minus sign. So what we have here is I think we can just look at this equation. So right here, at this arrow, we have xn minus a times yn, right? Because there's a feedback. This, step, this feedback is uh, imposed on the input. So after this plus operation, we have xn minus a times yn. xn minus a times yn is, is further fed into the delay system, so the delay by capital T. So that will give us Xn delayed by capital T is Xn minus capital T minus A times Yn delayed by capital T. Okay. So we so after this delay, we have Yn. So the system equation is described in this way. Okay, so Yn equals to delayed input minus a times delayed output. And then you re rearrange these terms, you can see that uh, the system equation is a standard difference equation. So this difference equation is always you know, usually introduced by the delay system, by the delay blocks. Once you have this delay block, you have different orders of difference in the equation. So, uh, so in this course, we will first, so we will first talk about uh, how to deal with LTS systems. 
And this two is OB system for the continuous time uh, system and this different system for the discrete time system. They are there are some practical examples. Uh, they are motivating examples. They cover a lot of practical discrete time and continuous time systems. So the course will be centered around these two types of equations. Now, the, in the later part of the course, we will apply Fourier transform or other transform techniques to solve these equations. Okay, so this ends finish the lecture three, uh, where we talk about basically all types of system properties. It's right here. So you, you must be able to follow their definition to uh, validate or categorize that uh, a certain system into diff these many different categories. And especially we will uh, focus on time <clears throat> linear and time invariant systems. Yes. Okay, so so you are referring to this this type of equation. Um, well, for for example, um, usually the x and y, right? They represent two different. Uh, in the system language, we say maybe you say x is the input, y is the output, but in general, they can be. Uh, regarded as uh, as long as there there is a relation between these two quantities, uh, you can you can treat one of them to be input and the other one as output. But for the, for this type of system, like for this circuit system, we don't have a. Uh, you can say the input is the voltage. Um, I don't know the input is voltage signal, and you are looking at output, which is the current signal. And you can see by the usually it, it is by the system property. Now, in this example, we are using leveraging the voltage and current law, the physics law. And using this law, we can say that, okay, the volt, the, the entire voltage of the system, which is the voltage of the power source, must be equivalent to the, the addition of all the voltages around each element. And then uh, these voltages, individual voltages, are related to their current uh, in different ways. And the nice thing is that in the entire system, the current must be shared. Right? The current is the constant in this entire loop. So that's why we have this yt on the left hand side. So this is the current. And, and then you, utilizing the current in different ways, we can characterize the voltages around different items. Now, summing them up by the physics law, uh, their summation must be equal to the voltage of the power source. So this is usually induced by the system itself. Yeah. So uh, any more questions? So then you should be able to, given a specific system, you should be able to uh, tell if it is linear or time invariant. And uh, for the last two, uh, big examples for this ODE system and difference equation system. Most of the case they are they are LTI systems, so they have very nice. Prop so if they are LTI, means that they are linear and time invariant. And in the next lecture, we are going to leverage this this base these two basic properties um, to understand the. Uh, further understand the intrinsic characteristics of these LTS systems. So, <clears throat> um, we have of 15 minutes. So maybe we can just look at the homework.
I won't go over them in details, but just give a high level uh, comment or discussion. Okay, let's, uh, I don't know these two, maybe yeah, we have to look, at, uh, let's look at the first two. The second one is uh, quite standard, but right? given these system equations, ABC systems, you need to find out, you need to categorize them into you know, memory, time invariant, linear, causal, stable. So categorize them uh, into different system categories. Basically by following the def their definitions, um yeah that's a good question i think i, I haven't posted that i will post it uh, right after this. Uh, i think this yeah this maybe seven to ten days so the second one is quite standard uh, it's just uh, following the slide definition now the first one is <clears throat> consider a system which is a interconnection of two systems s1 and s2 and s1 is followed by s2 so the diagram is you know s1 and s2 and you have x and you have y and then the corresponding uh, input and output yeah the corresponding input and output a system equation of these two systems are given here s1 s2 okay. this is these are their corresponding uh, system equation okay now the first a is determine the input and output relationship for the entire system uh well you you just follow the follow the system diagram you have a xn and you figure out what is y1 What is y1 and uh, y1 n is the output of s1 and then you further feed this y1 n to s2 to figure out what is the uh, final output y so in the end the system equation uh, you get must be must only involve x and y so it's just y n is you know, something related to x n So we only care about the input and output of the entire interconnected system. So part A should be relatively easy. Just plug in these system equations. Part B, does the input output relationship of system S change if the order in which S1 and S2 are connected in the series is reversed? Okay, so if the system if we switch the order of S1 and S2, make it S2 connected with S1, the question is, does, the, does this system equation uh, change? So I guess you can find it out by, by uh, working out the system equation of the second one. Yeah, that's the, <clears throat> the I think the part one is, relatively straightforward. And let's look at the problem three. It's not this one, sorry. B somewhere else. Oh, it's right here. Right. Yeah, I think this one, I need to give you some hint.
Okay, okay. So this is uh, <clears throat> yeah. We just consider a. Consider an LTI system whose response to the signal x one t is the signal y one t illustrated in figure here. So what, what's happening is that okay, we have an LTI system, linear and uh, time invariant. Now we are given that if this is the input to the system, then this is what you get at the output side. So it's a rectangle signal will translate transform into a triangular signal. So this is given by the this is a specific input and output pair of this LTI system. So I need you to determine and sketch the response of the system to the input X2. Okay, so if, if I give you this input and output pair, find out the output of this input. So the only condition that we are given is that the system's LTI is linear and uh, time, time invariant. Right, so we have we have LTI system we get and we have this specific input output relationship. And I think you can you can realize that um, so the hint is that x2 x1 are kind of similar right in, in some sense. So maybe you should consider uh, represent figure out the relation between x2 and x1 in terms of you know, linear and time invariance, and then leverage the LTI property to figure out the corresponding output. Okay, right. because x2 is a very, looks very special. So you basically copy x1, move it to the right and flip it, you get x2. So think about how to um, formalize this idea in a mathematical way and by leveraging the LTI property, you can get the corresponding output. Okay. <clears throat> so that's the third one. The fourth one is also Yeah, the first one is a little bit challenging. Uh, part A is true or false, B is true or false. I will skip these two parts. Now the difficult part is part C. Um, maybe we'll talk about this next time, but let's go over this problem. So we have these three systems and they are interconnected in this way. Okay, it's very clear. Every system, the equation is given, yn, xn. So the system is clear to us. Now the first system is a little bit uh, weird. It's yn is the xn over two when n is even. So it's like uh, the system one is a uh, sub sampling system. It only samples out the uh, even, uh, even inputs, uh, the inputs at the even time steps. Now system two, system three is given. Suppose the systems are interconnected in this way, find the input output relationship for the overall interconnected system. <clears throat> okay. So again, you're gonna follow the step-by-step, -step, figure out the input, the output of the first system, and then feed into the second system, find out the corresponding output and so on. And after that, you need to, uh, if you can do the first part correctly, I believe the second part will be very easy. Second part is to tell if this is a linear or and time invariant system, uh, considering the overall system equation. Okay. So <clears throat> I think the challenge part is to, is to properly find out the, the system equation for the entire system. In the end, it should be a very simple formula. So, uh, I, will, I will let you guys try first before I say anything. 
but the idea is straightforward. You just follow the follow them one by one. And to handle the it's, it's the difficult part is especially in the first system because you have to deal with two separate cases. Uh, for the or odd indexes, the output is always zero. For the even indexes, it has a uh, is the value of the corresponding input signal. So we need to think of a way to um, separate these two cases, to combine these two cases. <clears throat> for example, for example, you can see that, okay, uh, the output of system one depends on uh, whether or not the input index is even or odd. If it's even, then you have some signal. Otherwise, the output is zero. But then for the second system, the output is the linear combination of all the past inputs in the past two or three seconds. <clears throat> and then you you should you should be you should realize that suppose this n is an even number, then this must be odd. This must be even, right? And if n is an odd number, this must be even, this must be odd. So you, you need to discuss the even and odd of these quantities in order to connect to the first system equation. So that, that is the tricky part. And in the end, uh, in the last system, you can see that no matter, uh, no matter this n is even or odd, two times n is always an even number, okay? Two times n is always even. So again, this will be connected to the first system depending on the evenness or oddness of the, of the time index. Yeah, so, so you have to discuss the, these two cases very carefully when you deal with the first system. Okay, so I think I will stop here and uh, I'll see you on Thursday. Thanks. Yep, yeah, see you then.